So today we're going to be putting together one of our modular units and the very first step you're going to want to do is locate your hardware bags. And these can be found in carton 2 or box 2 of your unit. You're going to pull out C1 which are the cam bolts and D1 which are the wooden dowel pins. And then you're going to locate your panels and you're going to set those out because they're what you're going to be driving, drilling the cam bolts into first. So you have panel A, panel G, panel X, panel D, and panel Z. And into these you're going to be drilling your cam bolts. And we do recommend using a cordless or um, powered screwdriver to drill these into the holes. And the cam bolts will go into the smaller holes. There's always two holes and the cam bolts are going to go into the smaller of the two holes. And on panel A, it is going to be 11 cam bolts we're drilling in. Panel G also is 11 holes. Panel X is two cam bolts, panel D are four cam bolts, and panel Z are two cam bolts. So the second step of step one is inserting the wooden dowel pins into your panels. Again, the wooden dowel pins are marked as D1, and you're going to take panel Y2, panel Y1, panel X, panel D, and panel Z and put the wooden dowels in. When you put the wooden dowels in, they will go, there are holes on the ends of your panels. Look at the orientation of the cam and the hole above it. You do not want to put your wooden dowel in the hole above the cam. The wooden dowel goes either to the left or to the right of the cam de depending on the panels. Insert your cam, your wooden dowel, and then we suggest using a small ham hammer to tap in the wooden dowel. So we are still working under step one, which is preparing the panels. And our next step is using panels V1 and V2. We are going to deviate a little bit from our manual to make our lives easier while putting these two panels together. So we're going to skip step three, which says fix the handles. By doing this, it is giving us a flat working surface for our next few steps. So we are going to go to step four, which is fix the hinge G1 to our V1 panels using our S1 screws. And as you can see, you just screw them into the panel. They fit in the hole as such and use your S1 screws to attach them. Then we're going to skip to step six and attach the H1 screws using S1 screws. So once again using your power screwdriver you're going to take your S1 screws and drill them into the H1. We are now going to move, skip step seven and go to step eight which is attaching the magnet plate included with at the bag M and as you can see it fits on the panel of V2 using the two S4 screws found in a bag by themselves. So the next process of step one is one that we skipped earlier. We're going to go back to number three and put the handles onto panel V1 and V2. The handles are marked letter H in the bag and the bolts that we use are B2. And so we do recommend that you possibly grab a friend or somebody to hold the panel upright 
just so that you have more leverage uh, while doing this. And then you're going to put the bolts in the holes side of the hinges. So your handles you want on the opposite side of the hinges. The next process we're going to use on step one is another one that we had previously skipped is number five. We're going to attach or screw the metal bar support onto panel A using the S2 screws. So there are three screws. We're going to attach the metal bar to panel A using the three S2 screws. And also while we're on this panel, we're also going to attach letter M, which is our magnet plate, to top panel A using the S1 screws. Okay, the last process of step one was listed as step seven, and which is attaching the casters to panel G. And the casters are marked as T1, and you have washers that are marked as B4, and the spanner that is marked as R3. And all you are going to do is take your four casters, four locking casters, and put them on, put the washer on first, and then take your spanner and just screw the caster on. We are finally on step two of putting this cabinet together. And this step is taking your Y1 panel and your left lifter rail and attaching it to the panel using the S1 screws. And I wanna point out to you that it does take three S1 screws and the top and bottom hole do have pilot holes started. So we do recommend that you do the top and bottom screws first because the middle hole, there is no pilot hole. So you do need to create that hole on your own. And also once you um, put the lifter rail on, I want you to recognize the orientation of the slot. Uh, the slot it is on the top of the Y1 panel and the top of the rail is flush with the top of the Y1 panel. Step three is taking your Y2 panel and attaching the right lifter rail using the S1 screws. Now on this one, I wanna point out how you tell the difference between the right rail and the left rail is the right lifter rail has the plastic components. Again, you're going to uh, drill the top and bottom holes using your S1 screw because those pilot holes are there. And once you get those, your middle hole does not have a pilot hole, so you will need to drill your own hole. And again, the slot is up at the top of your panel and the top of the rail is flush with the panel. We are now on step four and you're going to take your X panel, your D panel, and your Z panel. And on these, you're going to take your cam bolts and line them up with the cams and slide them into the cams. And once in, you're going to take your screwdriver and turn the cams to lock them into place. And I do wanna point out on this step that it is very important that you pay attention to the orientation of the right side and the left side. On the right side, which you're attaching panel Z, there is a much shorter distance from the cam bolt and the cam on panel D. So on the right side, it's a short distance. And on the left side, it's a much larger distance. Step five, we are taking our Y2 panel and our Y1 panel and attaching it to panel D. And again, we're just taking our cam bolts and lining them up with the cams and the wood dowels in the holes. You put them down and then lock them with the screwdriver. And to point out the orientation of the slot on the rail, the slot is towards the top of the cabinet, slot up towards the top of the cabinet. 
Step six, we are taking our panel G, which is a bottom piece, and we are taking panel O, which is this little bitty piece that has the wood dowels and cams on it. And you're going to attach panel O to panel G, and keep in mind that you are lining up the cams and the cam bolts and then locking it into place with the screwdriver and the cams face the back of the cabinet. So on step seven, we are attaching panel G onto the rest of the cabinet we had previously assembled. So onto panel X, panel Y1, D, Y2, and Z. And all we're going to do is slide our cams bolts into the cams all the way around and screw to tighten. And then I do want to point out over here, there are two holes that we put the S20 screws into. So to affix the bottom panel to the cabinet itself. So put the screws in and use your screwdriver or power screwdriver to screw them in. Step eight is attaching our lifter to our lifter panel, which is A2, using our S1 screws again. And when you receive your lifter, it will have a zip tie. Just take the scissors to remove that before you attach it to the board. And then line up your lifter on the board. You'll see four holes. And you want to make sure that the outside hole matches up to the hole on each side and screw into the panel. Step nine is attaching the lift and the lifter board to the cabinet itself. And look at the orientation of the lift. You don't see any wires, so the wires are facing the back of the cabinet. You want the smooth part of the metal facing forward. And the wires are hidden towards the back of the cabinet. And what you're going to do is take and put the plastic guides over the rail like you see here and then take the wire edge and hook it onto the slot on the rails. And you're going to do that on each side. And then once these are attached, you're going to push your lift down until it locks into position. And at that point, the wooden block should pop out. Step 10 is we are placing the top of the cabinet to the cabinet and that's panel A. And you're going to line up your cam bolts with the cams all the way across the top of the cabinet and place them in the holes so the cam bolts and the cams line up and click into place. And then you're going to take your screwdriver to tighten all the cams. But I want you to look at the top and the orientation of the ruler that will be on the front of the cabinet. Another thing to consider is the metal bar we installed earlier. That is at the front of the cabinet as well. Step 11 is our movable shelf installation. And there are two panel E's and a bag of P1 pegs that you are going to use to put into the holes on the left side of your cabinet. And you can choose placement um, as long as your pegs are even with each other on both sides. You can count how many spaces you want. You can use one shelf, two shelves, however you want. But it is important that when you put the peg in that you have the flat side facing up. So, and it just sits on top of the pegs as such. In step 12, it is not listed on the instructions, but I do want to make sure that we point this out to attach the caster to panel V1 and V2, so the door. You're going to attach the caster to the bottom of the door, um, screw it in, and then use the spanner to tighten it. 
Continuing on with step 12, we are attaching our door panels, which are V1 and V2, the hinges to the cabinet with the S7 screws, and there's four of them in the bag. And so you're going to attach the hinges using the screws, and there's four holes, one there, below, and then on the bottom, the same and you'll see that there's three holes that go across here you're actually going to put them in the second hole um, I do want to point out to you as well that if your door is too low or too high you can actually loosen these screws to move the whole hinge either up or down